This is the world without senses. It sucks, right? So then it stands to reason that enhancing your senses would also enhance your experience of the world and maybe even your performance within it. Certainly it would when it comes to athleticism. But your senses are fine, right? If you don't wear glasses or have a hearing aid, you might think that you're pretty set. While that's true to an extent, the truth is that you can level up your senses, just like you can level up your strength. There is so much more that you could do to see and hear more clearly and to feel the movement of your body through space, and you would change your entire experience of reality by doing so. Also, this is easier to achieve than you think, because right now, you're probably not doing anything at all for those senses. This will be a multi-part series. In this video, we'll be discussing how to strengthen the muscles that control your eyes by adding one or two simple practices to your routine. With minimal effort, you'll sharpen your reflexes and feel more connection to the world around you. So, let me open your eyes. So the major extraocular muscles of the eye are the superior rectus, which moves the eye upwards, the inferior rectus, which moves the eye downwards, the medial rectus, which moves the eye inwards, medially, the lateral rectus, which moves the eye outwards, laterally, the superior oblique, which rotates the eye towards the nose and helps with downward movement, and the inferior oblique, which rotates the eye away from the nose and aids with upwards movement. These muscles are important for letting your eyes quickly dart around and to make fine adjustments, skills that will allow you to follow objects that you're tracking. We can, therefore, train them with specific tasks that require exactly that kind of movement. You'll notice just such an example on the screen right now. If you want a longer version of this video that you can use to train at your leisure, then head over to Patreon, where all tiers will be able to download it for free. These muscles aren't only for tracking, however. They also play perhaps an even more important role, keeping the eye steady. To speak in camera terms for a moment, we actually have built-in optical stabilization. Think about it, when you run, your eyes need to constantly adjust for those upwards and downwards movements, all that jolting around. Otherwise, all we'd see is a blur. This is actually a process that occurs in tandem with other muscles, such as the neck muscles. Your neck is another line of defense that helps to keep the head steady during unpredictable movement. It also contains a lot of muscle spindles, proprioceptors that sense changes in the length of the muscles. This is important because it allows the brain to carry out the necessary calculations to compensate and orient the eyes. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to tell whether you were standing on a slope or your neck was just tilted. Neck training can help to strengthen these muscles and allow for rapid adjustments and a powerful stabilization. However, neck mobility is arguably more important as so many of us have stiff necks from hours of phone and computer use. A simple neck mobility drill is a great option for encouraging fluid movement and enhancing awareness. It can also help to combat pain and even encourage blood flow to the brain. And consider as well that the eyes almost always lead movement. That is to say that before you turn your head, you must first move your eyes. The rest of your body then follows. So important is this, in fact, that we have another reflex that demonstrates this. Place your hand on the back of your neck and move your eyes, and you'll feel the splenius capitae muscles back there contracting. This all comes under the heading of eye-head coupling and it's very important for your athletic performance. So those were the extraocular muscles, meaning they were located outside of the eye and then move it around from there. Within the eye are the ciliary muscles. These intrinsic muscles have the job of shifting focus from objects in the foreground to objects in the background and vice versa, though they also work in tandem with the extraocular muscles, which we've discussed already, which help to control convergence. This process of shifting focus is called accommodation. The ciliary muscles can, again, be trained just like any other. And this is advisable again, given that so many of us spend ages staring at screens only a few inches in front of us. A great way to do this is with your finger. Simply hold it close to your face so that it's a modest distance to challenge and then keep it in focus. Then choose an object in the distance and consciously switch focus from one to the other. Over time, this practice can help to improve the efficiency of the accommodation reflex, though it likely won't reverse issues such as nearsightedness, which can have more to do with the shape of the structural elements of the eye. And speaking of seeing amazing things, any of you thinking of traveling somewhere soon should consider today's sponsor, Sailey. So Sailey is an eSIM. For those who aren't familiar, this is basically a SIM card that you use digitally, so there's no need for a physical card to slot into your device. 
You simply download the app and then you can select a data plan and you're good to go. This is really useful for trips abroad because unlike sticking with your current courier, you're not going to be racking up massive roaming fees. It also means no hunting around at airports for SIM cards. The sad news is that I'm not traveling anytime soon. I have two small kids aged two and five and just the thought of traveling somewhere that far with them fills my wife and me with absolute dread. I absolutely love being a parent but one of the things I miss most is the ability to travel more freely and you can bet that as soon as the kids are a little bit more settled we're going to be on the first plane out of here. So I'm looking forward to using Sabi then because I've seen just how quick and easy it is to use testing it right here and I know it's going to be a massive asset to my travel toolkit. But the great news for you guys who aren't grounded is that you can get a 15% discount by using code THEBIONEER. Just head over to sailey.com forward slash thebioneer or download the app, enter the coupon code and you'll get the money off. So happy travels, you lucky bastards. As you gain greater control over the movement of your eyes, the next question becomes what to do with that control? Well, you may have heard of a concept called the quiet eye. Basically, studies show that the highest performing athletes actually have less movement, and we call this the quiet eye. The best golfers will rest their eyes on the ball for longer as compared with their less capable competitors. This has been demonstrated in numerous studies. That is, a gaze that starts sooner and lasts longer results in better performance. It has been observed in closed repetitive skills like putting, but also in open chaotic skills like hockey. One study tracked the eyes of goalies during a hockey game and found that every single save had a longer quiet eye duration than every single miss. Why? It may be that this allows for better pre-programming. That means more time for computation regarding the force and trajectory with which to move. Another theory is online control, which says that the body has more ability to correct movement as it occurs because it can respond on the fly. But it may also simply be indicative of other factors, perhaps those with a longer quiet eye duration simply have better focus and control traits that would lead themselves to better sport performance across the board. Dr. Samuel Vine, who has done extensive research into the quiet eye, says that the quiet eye can be taught and that these skills will transfer to better athletic performance. You'll find all my references in the description down below, by the way. And I also recommend a video by Michael McKelvey for more on this topic specifically. I'll link to him in the description down below. Dr. Robert Gray, author of How We Learn to Move, recommends that introducing more variety into your training can be huge. Repetition without repetition. And this is precisely what Nikolai Bernstein teaches for better proprioception and skill acquisition. And it's precisely what I've always recommended as the antidote to our modern stiffness. In this video essay, we've discussed a couple of practices you can do to enhance the movement of your eyes. Things like visual tracking tasks, focus exercises, and neck mobility drills. You can also use virtual reality eye tracking tools, which I've dabbled with in the past and had some success with. And you can use eye tracking tools if they're available to you. You know, they're not cheap and I don't think you can buy them in Tesco's. But while all these drills can be useful, you should know by now that I take issue with creating long lists of drills for specific traits. Doing these things is boring and a considerable investment of time. It sounds smart until you realize that if you're doing this, you should also be training your grip and your foot health and your proprioception and whatever else. It's just too much. Better then is to practice these things incidentally, to engage in activities, sports, and hobbies that will naturally train you in these abilities. For example, that visual stabilization can also be trained by being more aware while you're running. If you want your eyes to get better at stabilizing your vision when you move, you should practice doing just that. Go for a sprint and keep your eyes fixed on something in the distance. Practicing accelerating and running on rough terrain at the same time. Or how about playing a sport like tennis or squash? Now you're tracking the ball while moving rapidly, shifting focus and bringing all your other senses into play as well. Putting a golf ball is a closed skill. Curling weights is a closed skill. When you take part in open skills like sparring, playing sports, riding a bike, you have to deal with so much more stimuli. And as we see here, the benefits of these types of activities go extremely deep. Simply lifting weights builds muscle, but it's so simple that you miss out on all these other incredible benefits, even healthier eyes. By not just training your muscles, but actually using your body, using your fitness, you will see countless attributes level up, including your eye tracking capabilities. True exercise doesn't just build muscle, it develops every aspect of the body to work as a single, elegant machine. 
I'm an introvert and that's why I include things like juggling and jump rope into my own programming. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can find my ebook and training program, Superfunctional Training 2.0, in the description down below. It's designed to develop everything from your strength, to your mobility, to your endurance, to your brain function, and that includes eye tracking. You can also practice being more aware of your quiet eye during some of these activities. So if you're bouncing a ball against the wall, juggling or whatever else, just try and keep your eyes still and rested and be more cognizant of what you're doing with your eyes. Hopefully by doing this, some of that visual concentration will also translate to activities outside of the gym. It can be the difference between winning a fight or losing a fight, hitting a ball or not hitting a ball, seeing that elderly lady crossing the road when you're driving and not. Don't underestimate the value of this. Being able to more quickly change your focus to bring things into clear relief has significant benefits in martial arts and sports. It can simply make you feel more switched on and alert, more aware of the world around you and more connected to it. As someone who's very in their own head a lot of the time, I often feel like I'm sleepwalking through life to the point where I've questioned my own vision. Not because I can't see, but because I don't see. And in my experience, these exercises have helped. Because it's not just about the fidelity of your vision. It's not just about how much information your eyes can take in. It's about how you select and tend to that information and how you juggle it in your mind's eye. When we get our eyes tested, we focus so much on the ability to read at a distance, but this is only a very tiny part of a far more complex set of processes. Which brings us nicely to the topic of part two, sports vision. Stay tuned for that one, where we'll learn how to develop your visual spatial awareness. Bye for now.